Peter Block at Orlando at the annual AHA meeting for On the Scene, and with me is Lucas Borsma from Holland. Lucas is an EP type, but does left atrial appendage occlusion, and we were talking about, and he has talked about, uh, this whole business of left atrial appendage using the Watchman device. Lucas, it sounds to me like your trial is finally, or not trial registry, is finally the right way to evaluate this, patients that have really a high risk of bleeding and are not good for anticoagulation. Tell me about your registry. Well, in Europe, um, uh, patients are only eligible if they have a contraindication to oral anticoagulation. So many patients that we enrolled in this real-world registry were patients that had a contraindication. More than 60% had a contraindication. So that is uh, indeed closer to a real, a real life. And actually a real use for this because you would think that if you're going to close the left atrial appendage, they shouldn't be anticoagulated afterwards anyway. But that's a topic for another discussion. Tell me what you found. Well, we enrolled more than 1,000 patients, and uh, today we talk about uh, the acute and procedural uh, efficacy and adverse event rate. Again, if we look at the characteristics, 60% were not was not eligible to uh, anticoagulation, and if you look at the risk score for uh, stroke and bleeding, then if you compare it to prior Watchman trials, this population was uh, at a higher risk for stroke, at a higher risk for bleeding, obviously, and also had a higher HASBLAD score. Now, if you look at the outcome of the uh, implant procedure itself, then 98.5% uh, uh, of all the patients had a successful implant with the device deployed inside the appendage with more than 99% with uh, a, a good sealing as we are uh, looking at it for, with, with, with Watchmen. You need adequate sealing obviously as well. So that part is good and that's even a little bit better than what we've seen in the, uh, in the prior randomized trials. If we look at safety, then we saw 84 adverse events uh, uh, during the whole 30-day follow-up after the implant uh, and about 60% of these were not adjudicated to be uh, a result from the procedure or the device. So only 40% were adjudicated to be procedure or device related possibly. And these included obviously a few bleedings. Uh, there were some patients that had tamponade which we uh, resolved without any problems. Uh, and I think that these two were the most important ones. We had two devices that embolized. We had a few patients with air embolism. What you can expect uh, from uh, doing a, uh, an implant in a patient, uh, you, you cannot make an omelet without breaking an egg once in a while. That's obviously uh, important. I agree. So this is very much actually like the Watchman trials with some adverse effects. <clears throat> Did these patients get anticoagulation afterwards? There you go. Yeah, this is obviously the important part. More than 600 patients were not eligible. So only 30% of the patients had uh, warfarin after the therapy and 55% had only dual antiplatelet therapy directly after the uh, implant, which is in Europe is the instruction for use. So uh, indeed, this is different than what we've seen in other uh, Watchman trials because there every patient had uh, a bridging period using oral anticoagulation and that was definitely not the case in this population. So uh, it sounds to me like you've got pretty good operators. You did very well in terms of acute outcomes. I'm looking forward to your two-year outcomes obviously when you'll have some information about stroke because that's what this is all about. But uh, we'll see how that all works out. But for now this is real life watchman stuff and so far it seems to be going well and these patients are not being anticoagulated, or at least a high number of them, with warfarin, and that's all good news to see how they work out in the long run. Yeah, I think that is really the important message of the trial data that we uh, that we showed today. Thanks for coming by. You're welcome.